the basic underlying defect in cystic fibrosis um, is an abnormality in a something called a chloride channel. It's a cystic fibrosis transmembrane conductance regulator. A complete mouthful, that's why we say CFTR. If you say CFTR, that's, you know everything you need to know. It's a protein that lines most of the surfaces of the tubes in our body, and particularly the lungs, and that affects the salt and water balance. That imbalance, which gives us sort of dehydrated, dry mucus in our lungs, makes us more susceptible to infection and really leads to a lot of the problems that are the, the main things that we fight in cystic fibrosis. Two of the specific drugs which uh, help to address this underlying protein problem, the salt and water balance, are two compounds um, called VX770 and VX809. Uh, VX stands for vertex. Um, these compounds work a little bit differently, um, but they both uh, are designed specifically to fix the underlying problem. So the one that's a little bit further along in development is VX770. It's specifically a compound which helps to activate the protein that's, that's the cystic fibrosis protein that's not working normally, that's lining the, the tubes in the lungs, and it's affecting that salt and water balance. Now, in order to have that protein uh, work, the protein has to be sitting up on the surface. So it's lining the, lining the surface and it's doing its work with the salt and water balance. For a subset of our patients with some specific mutations, particularly one called G551D, um, that protein sitting right there, ready to go, except it just isn't turned on all the way. So uh, VX770 specifically helps to activate that, to get it revved up and working to really so it'll start doing its job. So it'll start uh, helping with that salt and water balance. Now obviously we're most concerned about the lungs because the lungs are where the action is. That's the thing that makes individuals with cystic fibrosis sick. But one of the ways we can get out how that balance is working is by looking at the sweat duct because it's a place where we can measure the effect on salt. Right? And so when we do sweat tests, we can see whether or not that salt problem, that salt imbalance is being fixed by seeing whether or not the sweat test is improving. So in the early trials of VX770, um, we actually saw for the very first time ever that we were able to make a, a dramatic effect on sweat chloride. And some patients actually be able to put that from a cystic fibrosis range to a normal range. And that's a sign that we're really being able to fix that underlying problem. The one drawback it is it's, it's a subset of patients. It's not the most common. The um, VX809 addresses that. It's specifically designed for patients with uh, the most common type of mutation, something called Delta F508 or more recently being called F508 Del. You can hear me called either way. It's the one that about 90% of CF patients have at least one copy of. 50% of our patients have two copies of it. So it's really the one that we want to get after. The problem with this group is that protein's not sitting up on the surface. It's sort of stuck inside the cell, and it needs to be trafficked up to the surface and put onto the surface and then turned on if we're going to get this salt and water effect that we're hoping for. So what the 809 uh, compound does, this VX809, is it helps get that protein from where it's stuck in the cell up onto the surface so then it could be turned on and hopefully you see the same type of effects in the, in the Delta F508 patients, which is the most common. That next really exciting trial that's coming up is this combination trial. We're actually going to use both of those compounds, so the 809 and the 770, to get this most common type of cystic fibrosis problem so the protein gets up to the surface and then gets turned on. Remember we said that 770 turns on the protein once it's up on the surface. The 809 helps to get it up there. So obviously the ideal thing is to put those two things together to be able to get the protein to right where we need it and then to use the second uh, medication, uh, the 770, to go ahead and turn it on to its maximum effect. I think one of the common questions is when can we expect results from these trials? Um, the truth is it's a building process, right? So the, the, the trial that I'm the, the principal investigator on, this combination trial, um, actually will take about a year and a year and a half just to perform. And that's because we're going to be doing steps to look at the, finding out the right dose, figuring out what the best um, combination of these two medications uh, is for giving us the best effect. And that's really going to give us in some ways a map of taking the next step. One of the things that you have to be excited about is that um, both of these vertex compounds are something that's a pill that you take by mouth. 
It's exciting for a couple reasons. We're talking about pills that you take either once or twice a day. The other thing that makes this exciting is that as much as we focus on the lungs, cystic fibrosis affects the entire, the entire body. So it can affect the sinuses, it can affect the intestines, it can affect the pancreas. So by taking a, something by mouth that's absorbed, while we're going to be focusing on the lungs, we're also going to be eventually focusing on the other parts of the body, which could also benefit from taking something by mouth and allows the medicine to reach all the parts of the body. If we can get to this, the end of this trial and say this is going to work, we will be off to the races.